guys, this is Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi. I'm here in my lab in Denver, Colorado, and I'm going to be sharing with you guys today how I clone um, some oyster mushrooms from a polyspore culture. So I took a, a spore print and um, inoculated some grain spawn and then transferred that to bulk substrate not too long ago. And I ended up with some nice fruits here, but there's definitely a few different phenotypes in this one block, so I'm going to clone this phenotype, which it seems to be a lot more what I was looking for, kind of like a delicate snow oyster variety. Um, this was from a, t a oyster in Telluride that we found during the mushroom festival, so I had cloned that species as well and um, took a spore print and then I tried to do some um, pheno hunting. So one of the problems with spores is that you end up with some weird mushrooms like this. That it smells good and will probably taste good, but it doesn't really have the, the shape of the fruiting body. These are all kind of off the same block and it's really cool seeing the different variations of um, phenotypes when they fruit. And uh, this one right here, you can see it's a lot more delicate and kind of um, wavy looking. Um, it never really fanned out like this other kind of oyster. So I'm going to be taking cuts from this fruiting body here. It's got a really nice shape. Um, all you need to do this is uh, some MEA auger, um, and then I've got a blade, a blade handle sterilized, and I will show you how I go about doing that. Um, so the first thing you want to do is clean out the hood, which I've already cleaned it out, and it doesn't have to be super clean if you're cloning mushrooms. Like these came from the fruiting room, so it wasn't 100% sterile, um, but it's always good to clean your hood. So. I'm going to clean it out with bleach and get everything ready. Alright guys, so the hood is all cleaned out. I'm just going to spray it uh, one more time with some alcohol. Give it one last clean. And I'm going to start by opening up this pack of plates. Hey guys, I apologize about the audio. Um, something was happening to my microphone. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, kind of go through this with you. Right now, basically, I'm um, displaying the, the auger, which I'm going to be using, which is malt extract auger, and then um, the fresh tissue, which is from the elm oyster that I'm going to be cloning. And then right now I'm opening up some of the blades, or a sterile blade, a number number 10, which is my favorite because of how it's shaped. Um, it's perfect for, for grabbing the tissue. See the bevel, it's nice and pointy so I, I can make accurate cuts. So the most important part about cloning a mushroom is that you want the tissue to come from the innermost part of the fruiting body. So essentially you want to take a sterile piece of tissue from within the mushroom and transfer that to the auger. So right here I'm making an incision so I can cut the tissue open. I like to do it right before it hits the cap, like the region, especially in an oyster, before it, it fans out is pretty dense. So I'm making a cut. As you can see, it's like a triangle shape. And now I'm transferring it to the Petri dish. And I'm going to make about two or three more cuts. And then putting those on the dish, which will allow for me to 
observe growth of the mycelium in the next few days. So as you can see, I'm holding the mushroom open with my left hand and then making the cuts with my right hand, making sure that the tissue that I'm grabbing is not in contact with the outside of the mushroom and is in fact tissue that is from within the mushroom. So I've got two cuts on, on that plate already and this looks like another pretty good mushroom that I'd like to clone. So I'm going to make an incision and then make my cuts from within that mushroom. Alright, so I just cracked into the tissue and I'm holding that dense region with my left hand and then I'm gonna make a couple angled precision cuts and then from that little slice it will be sterile tissue that I'm gonna be using to put on the auger petri dish. One of the benefits of cloning like this is that I will most likely get the same phenotype so I started with a polyspore culture which resulted in quite a bit of different phenotypes and one or two of those had some really nice shaped fruiting bodies that I'm going to be selecting for. And right now I'm kind of explaining the reasoning why I use so many tissues per plate. When you, when you clone a tissue culture, the chances are much more high that you'll get some contamination. So I like to take multiple cuts and space them out and as I'm observing it for growth, I'll further select the mycelium and move it to the next petri dish. So after you have your cuts, it's important to label. I always label on the bottom of the uh, on the bottom of the petri dish. That way, if the plates ever fall over, or if a stack ever falls over and the plate the tops get mixed up, you'll still have the culture. Um, also, it's easier to observe contamination when there's no writing on the top. And now I'm going to be applying some hair film on the petri dish. This is a wax coating that helps protect the moisture from staying inside and it also protects from contaminants. So after I wrap it up and label it, I'll stick that in the incubator until it colonizes the plate. Alright, so I hope you enjoyed my video on how to clone tissue from a polyspore culture like this video if you found it helpful, share it if you know if anyone else would find it helpful, and subscribe to my channel if you're interested in more videos like this. Thanks for listening.